Starship Super Heavy gets frosty on the pad, Starlink evolves with the changing times, the player's program nerds out on science experiments, Falcon Heavy is on deck, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. SpaceX picked up where they left off last week with cryo-loading on Monday, first pumping cryo into Booster 7's LOX tank, then doing the same with Starships. It doesn't appear either were topped off. Then after skipping Tuesday, they repeated the cryo testing on Wednesday, this time for each stage's methane tank, again not filling them up fully. Another test is possible today, keep an eye on La Padre's channel for up-to-date coverage. The plan still is to make 24-7 the first duo to attempt the orbital flight, unless they're somehow damaged during testing. SpaceX is proceeding carefully to hopefully keep that from happening. A 33-engine booster static fire is the next major obstacle in need of hurdling. On Thursday evening, SpaceX launched 53 more Starlink satellites to orbit from Vandenberg Space Force Space, California. And since it was a sunset launch on the West Coast, it provided some pretty dope views from LA. This one shared by Elon on his new company's website, Twitter. The first stage Falcon 9's booster landed out at sea for an eighth time on Of Course I Still Love You. The company is now officially accepting orders for Starlink services in motion through their RV package. Utilizing the flat high-performance terminal works on any moving land object, so don't get it for your boat. For that, you'll need the maritime package. Meanwhile, myself and many others on the east side of the United States are still standing by for our orders to be fulfilled. Many have been pushed from late 2022 to mid-2023. But SpaceX has reached out with a lifeline for those who are desperate enough. Their best effort service option is available for those with urgent connectivity needs. You'll pay the same residential costs, but receive notably slower speeds than residential users, especially during peak hours. Here's some fantastic news my audience will appreciate. Rumble announced that their cloud has officially begun peering with Starlink, meaning there is now a direct physical connection between the two, further emboldening the good fight to secure free speech. And speaking of fights, Russia is still threatening to target Starlink satellites, and of course, nuclear war, as the US now has troops stationed just a few miles from Ukraine's border. And efforts have been underway for weeks to get Starlink terminals to the freedom fighters in Iran, Dozens of terminals are already in country, and while it's all being kept on the down low, for the most part, I guess, there have been talks between Elon and the White House to make this widespread in the protest movement. Ironically, the one that began after a 22-year-old woman died under suspicious circumstances after being detained by the regime's morality police for not wearing her mask, sorry, her hijab, correctly. The Polaris program has taken advantage of the option to donate Starlink services, spending $500,000 to connect 100 schools in Chile and Brazil with the satellite network. Quote, this technical tool, complemented by an educational component of teacher training, allows us to continue improving educational quality and bring opportunities to children, said Tomas Record, executive director of Encina Chile. Players Dawn has also revealed their selection of 38 projects from 23 partner institutions to be executed during their work week in Earth orbit no earlier than March of next year. Like this cyborg contact lens that can read changes in the eye caused by spaceflight. You can read through all the experiments on their website, playersprogram.com. It has been more than three years, but the next Falcon Heavy mission is quickly approaching. The vehicle completed a static fire of all 27 Merlin engines at Pad 39A and will lift off with payload on board from the USS F on Tuesday, November 1st. The first Falcon Heavy mission in more than three years. Get bumped. Also, SpaceX has surpassed Boeing this year to become NASA's number two vendor for spaceflight activity, second only to Caltech, which of course operates JPL. Lookout establishment, the SpaceX pirates have come to disrupt the status quo. Arr. But now I briefly want to introduce the sponsor for this video, The Epic Times. It's important to stay informed, not just with SpaceX news, which obviously you're already on top of as a viewer of this channel, but also US news, world news, and all kinds of breaking news happening outside of our little space bubble community. Because being informed means you're able to make informed decisions. And I don't know if you've heard, but there's a very important midterm election coming up in the next week and a half. So become a subscriber of the Epic Times to get a vast wealth of current, truthful information right at your fingertips. They just report the facts and trust their discerning readers to arrive at their own conclusions. They have a ton of content spanning a wide variety of interests, including award-winning documentaries and original Epic TV programs. My favorite is their American history shows. So give them a try, we think you like it. I even have a special offer for you, my viewers. One dollar for two months. So go to epictim.es slash spaceeccentric and subscribe today. And now it's time for today's Honorable Mention. Just after last Friday's episode dropped, game developer Intercept Games announced they are taking Kerbal Space Program 2 live for early access in February. 
If you don't know what Kerbal is, it's kind of like Flight Simulator, except you can design and build out your own aircraft, or even better, rockets, and use them to fly your colony of Kerbals in a simulated environment that uses some fairly realistic physics. You can even fly them to other planets if you become savvy enough, and in KSP2, even interstellarly to other solar systems. When the game drops in early access, players will get access to basically everything they get in KSP1. The entire revamped Kerbolar system, which if you're not familiar with the game for the most part mimics our own solar system, vehicle parts veteran players will be familiar with and parts they won't be familiar with, and the tutorials for new players that even the veteran players will admit they plan on watching just for the entertainment value. Then as development progresses to the official release, completely new features like colonies and multiplayer will be added. If you're wondering why a video game is this week's honorable mention, well, it's featured in our honorable mention intro. I also use KSP1 to make my outros, and I'm very much looking forward to transitioning to the sequel. But most importantly, the game has a massive following in the space community and is responsible for a lot of people not only getting into the hobby of rocketry, but actually becoming aerospace engineers. It pretty much taught me everything I know about orbital mechanics. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for stopping by, and thank you supporters for supporting the channel. Everyone have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.